everybody. Um, how you doing? It's been a quiet month, hasn't it? I know I said I was going to do a video each Tuesday, and I ended up being sick for four weeks. Still have a little cough around, but it's not as bad as it was before. Um, I'll get into it later on. I've decided that I'm going to go right into head to reading to you guys. Um, and of course for my book, Immortal Love, by moi. And <clears throat> anything else I want to add, I'll do it at the end. And today I'll just do chapter one. I know I said I'll do two chapters each time I do a video, but I decided against that. So, especially today since my battery's phone is kind of low. So, here we go. Um, chapter one, two years later. The sound of splashing filled the air as Genevieve swam another lap in the pool. She was doing freestyle. It was her 20th and last lap of the day. She took a deep breath after she touched the edge of the pool. She stayed there for a couple of minutes, getting her breath back. Then she lifted herself out of the pool. She walked to the hot tub. She slid into the bubbly water and sank in relief as the warm water enveloped her. She closed her eyes and leaned her head back against the tub's edge. Going to therapy didn't give her as much tranquility as coming here to the pool at the gym. Then again, she wasn't surprised about that. Swimming was her greatest passion. It brought her peace and immense pleasure. She liked to swim laps all year round and enjoyed being in the water. She enjoyed this recreation before she could even walk. Although she preferred swimming pools, she would swim anywhere with water as long as it's safe. She had been on the swim team for a local swim club during the summer from the time she was 10 until she was 16. On top of that, swimming is a lifetime activity which makes her very happy. Of course, she had three other passions besides swimming. Dancing was her second greatest passion. She had been dancing since she was six. When she saw a poster of a woman doing a split, she got inspired to do that too and worked hard at it until she could finally do a split. She had received a Dance Achievement Award when she was nine for completing basic training in ballet, tap, and jazz. She competed for her dance school from the time she was 10 until she was 14. When she was in high school, she was on the dance squad. Now her goal is to become a well-known dance choreographer. History was her third greatest passion. Since she was eight, she had... Eh, sorry about that. Since she was eight... She has been interested in history. She likes to study U.S. history the most. She likes to visit historical... <laughs> Sorry about that. Visit historic attractions in towns. As a backup career to her choreography, she wants to be a tour guide for a major historic attraction like Mount Vernon or Mont... I know, I'm going to say those wrong. Monticello. That's the way you pronounce it, right? The place that Thomas Jefferson lived at? Monticello? Monticello. One of you all can correct me on that. I apologize if I said that wrong. Painting was her fourth greatest passion. She had liked to paint since she was four. She liked to do acrylic and watercolors. She liked to paint nature scenes like sunsets the most. She did the occasional painting of a person or an object. While she didn't strive to be a professional painter, she had been paid for a couple of her paintings. She had an unusual style, too. She combined two artistic techniques. Her paintings had the styles of Expressionism and Impressionism. <clears throat> she had moved to Bay Haven six months ago. It was a small town by the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. Heads up, no it's not. This is a fictional town, okay? Sorry about the cough. <clears throat> it had been the perfect place to move to. The town was very historic, which suited her passion in history. Bay Haven had been founded over 300 years ago. The town had a population of 800 people. There was a main street that had many small businesses, an old-fashioned theater, a roller rink, a gym with an outdoor pool as well as an indoor pool, 
a couple of small restaurants, including a diner, a tavern, a dance studio, a small harbor where many fishermen worked, and an old-fashioned lighthouse on the shore. On the outskirts, I can't believe I said it like that. On the outskirts of town, there was some chain stores since there was a major highway nearby. There was a McDonald's, a Starbucks, a Taco Bell, a Pizza Hut, Borders. <laughs> That's been out of business since I last written this. A Target and a Sears. Not to mention there were a couple of gas stations too. Most of the business was from travelers. A couple of weeks later, after she moved to Bay Haven, she got a job at a local tavern called Maddie's. It had been built in the late 1700s. The tavern had been in her boss's family for generations. Pete Madison was an excellent man to work for since he was hardworking and very compassionate. She worked as a waitress during the day shift. Her hours were from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Mondays to Fridays. She only got the weekend off. However, this weekend, her schedule had changed since she was covering for Beverly, whose husband was recently in a car accident. Beverly wanted to spend every moment beside her husband's bedside, since he was still in critical condition. Genevieve knew the feeling all too well from all the times Chris had gotten injured on the job as a cop. So this week, she was working from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. She started the shift on Thursday and worked until Saturday. Pete had given her next Monday off since she was working on Saturday, which had been awfully nice of him. Normally... She would go swimming at the gym after she got off at 4 p.m. It was always a nice way to unwind after work, but it was a great, but it was great too before work because swimming was such a stress reliever. She looked at the clock on the wall. It was 3 p.m. It was time to get out of the hot tub. She went to the locker room and began to take a shower. As the hot water droplets ran over her body, her mind began to wander. She had started in loop. Blah, blah. Sorry about that. She had started in a new life, but it seemed like... Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> but it seemed that her old life didn't want to let her go. The new house, the new town, and the new job weren't enough to keep... Yeah. Keep the demons at bay. She felt anguished mostly because her life had been turned upside down in a matter of minutes and had stayed that way. Dot, 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 dot. Her life had been great before the crash, which she now jokingly referred to as B.C. before crash. She was born and raised in the state of Maryland, like me. She was the youngest of five children. Her parents were Madeline and Nicholas Avery. They were loving, compassionate, and supportive. Yet they could be tough disciplinarians when their kids acted out. So she had a very happy childhood between spending time on her hobbies and being with her family. High school had gone well, too. She got, on, she got on the honor roll for each quarter, was on the dance squad, and had many friends. She worked for her mom and her sister Isis at their cafe, Java for You. By the way, I included that name before Isis became an issue. Keep in mind, I finished this book in 2011. Didn't publish it until 2014. And I also named her after Isis because I like the Egyptian goddess Isis, so or I Isis. I don't know where the hell I got Isis from. Uh, I'm just going to go on that line again. She worked for her mom and her sister Isis at their cafe Java for You as a barista since she was 16. She had gone to a two-year college after she graduated from high school. She majored in dance and minored in history. She graduated. I just seriously stated it as that. She graduated with an associate's art degree in dance when she was 20. She had known her husband Chris all over all her life because he was best friends with her older brother Danny. Both Danny and Chris were six years older than her. Chris had short brown hair, brown eyes, and an athletic build and stood six foot foot four. When she was 18, she had found out that Chris had fallen in love with her. It had been a shock to everyone, especially to her brother Danny, because his best friend was in love with his little sister. However, the more that she and Chris dated, the more Danny thought they were a cute couple. 
They were in a steady relationship for two years before Chris proposed to her at the Marilyn Renaissance Festival. A year after their engagement, she married Chris when she was 21. They had the wedding at her parents' house. The, Sumer the cer ceremony <laughs> took place outside in the backyard, and the reception took place inside. Danny, naturally, was Chris's best man. Her best friends, Diana, Eliza, and Kristen, were all of her maids of honor. They went to a bed and breakfast near Williamsburg for their honeymoon. They bought a house in Davidsonville. I can't believe I just said it like that. Davidsonville. God. I'm sorry if I'm reading like this today, guys. I really am. Like I said in the last video, I'm not the best talker in the world. <clears throat> Where was I? Yeah. They bought a house in Davidsonville, Maryland, after they got married. They brought most of the furniture that occupied every room in the house. She found out she was pregnant a couple months later and knew they were going to have a girl when Genevieve was in the middle of her second trimester. They decided to name their daughter Dana since both of them had been fans of the X-Files and they liked the character Agent Dana Skelly. They both had worked on Dana's nursery three months before she was born. Then when she was 22, she had Dana. The little girl had been born with brown hair. As she got a little older, her eyes were hazel and she had cute dimples whenever she smiled. Yep, life had been grand. Until the crash happened. The plane had slid into the water after crashing onto the bridge. She could have drowned if she didn't escape the cabin. She could have died of hypo hypothermia from the river's freezing temperatures. Yet she didn't develop hydrophobia, the fear of water. She did develop a fear of flying, though. She hadn't been in a plane for two years now. She didn't have any intention of ever flying again. She would die a happy woman if she didn't have to fly anymore. Though that hindered her dream career of becoming a well-known choreographer. Of course, that dream had already been compromised a bit because of, her, of the injuries she sustained in the crash. <laughs> Her left wrist had been broken. She had gotten a laceration on her right eyebrow and several bruises all over her body that ranged in size. Luckily for her, none of her injuries had been life-threatening. Only thing that had really threatened her life was the hypothermia. She had gotten treated for hypothermia as soon as she arrived to the hospital. After her condition had been stabilized, she was taken to surgery for her broken wrist. Everything else needed ice or bandages. For months, she was in pain and went to physical therapy for a wrist. For the most part, her physical injuries had healed. Now she needed to mend the emotional scars she had gotten. Chris had died on impact. Dana died from water intoxication since her body had been submerged for minutes in the freezing water. The baby had been the last casualty to be recovered from the plane, and they had found her on the floor two rows ahead from where they had sat. Out of the 112 people that had been on the plane, only four people survived. It was something that had been hard to swallow, even to this day. Questions of her survival often ran through her head. Why did she survive? What made her life so special compared to the 108 people who had lost their lives? Why did anyone have to die? Two years later, she still couldn't answer those questions. She had been close to answering the question of why she survived, she had a small frame. She was only four foot eleven. Her body was able to survive the impact of the crash. As for not drowning, she was an avid swimmer. Even though her left wrist had been broken, she had been strong enough to swim towards the surface of the river. She didn't freeze to death because emergency services arrived in time. Her therapist had speculated that she survived because she had wanted to. That theory had sounded so unfair to those that didn't survive. Of course, life is unfair. If she didn't know that before the crash, she certainly knew it now. However, it didn't give her any comfort. There was definitely an investigation into the crash by the National Transportation Safety Board. It took several months to piece everything together to explain why the plane had fallen out of the sky. At first, it was perceived that the crash was caused by ice contamination on their wings. 
that was the case until they checked the engines and realized that the anti-freeze function had been on. The final report from the NTSB was that the crash was caused by a bird strike. The plane had flown inadvertently into a flock of Canadian geese where it caused distress on, to both engines. A month after the crash happened, she had the memorial service for her husband and daughter. It had been rough. She had a hard time coming home every time she went out. She knew it would be an empty house. She had trouble sleeping at night without her husband by her side or hearing those sounds of her baby cries. Whenever she read a, uh, whenever she read or took a bubble bath, she would always expect to be interrupted by Dana crying or giggling in delight. Instead, she was met by silence. It had become painful to live in that house by herself. It's why she had decided to move to Bay Haven. There, she could try to get her life back on track. She had sold her house, including the furniture she brought with Chris, to a family that had two small children. She had given her two-week notice to her mother and Isis three weeks before she moved on. She officially moved to Bay Haven two weeks after she turned 24. Her parents gave her a combined birthday and going-away party. Her sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, friends, and her former in-laws, they were friends of her parents, were all there. It had been nice to spend time with her loved ones before moving to a new place with new people. Dot, 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 dot. One thing stood out in her mind after all these years. Other than why she survived. She had dreamt about a mysterious man while she was going through the aftermath of the crash. Well, she shouldn't say that he was completely mysterious. He did give her a name. Lucian Black. She loved the name Lucian. It was a name you would hear too often. It was definitely very old-fashioned. Lucian had been absolutely handsome. Handsome. He had medium-length hair that was black as a raven wing with trimmed sideburns. His eyes were blue and mesmerizing. His skin was a bit pale, but his cheeks had a slight blush. He was very tall, between six foot two and six foot four. He was built like an athlete with defined muscles. He looked to be in his thirties, but something, she didn't know what, had told her he was much older than he appeared. When she dreamed about him, she thought he was the angel of death. How could she not? She had awakened in pitch darkness. She thought she had died from hypothermia. A little later, a halo of bright light appeared above her. Now she had heard of the inf- not infamous, I'm sorry about that. Now she had heard of the famous bright light. I mess up again. Oh, come on, Lindsay, get together. Now she had heard of the famous bright white light that people claimed to see when they had a near-death experience. However, aren't they supposed to be running to the light or away from it? She couldn't run either way since it was directly above her. That was her first clue that she wasn't dead. Unfortunately, she didn't feel like she was alive either. It seemed to her she had been thrown into a place that had that was between the realm of the living and the dead. Deep in her heart, she hoped Dana had been in the same place as her, so she had begun to look for her baby girl. That's how she came upon Lucian. She hadn't dreamed about him since that horrible day. She had been disappointed, too. She felt like she had known Lucian all her life, which was impossible as she had never met him before. It was almost as if her soul had recognized him. Or recognized his. Or what was left of it. She shook her head suddenly at the thought. Where had that come from? Several months after the crash, she actually began to search his name on the internet and in phone books. <laughs> phone books. Naturally, she couldn't find him anywhere. She had given up the search for her dream mystery man by the time she decided to move to Bay Haven. However, a piece of her didn't give up hope that he was real. Considering she had a sixth sense, anything was possible. After she finished her shower, she dried herself off and got dressed in her work uniform. It was black slacks, a black t-shirt with Maddie's and white over the left breast, and a blue apron. She put on some makeup and put her hair into a braid. Then she left to go to work at her first night shift at Maddie's tavern. End of chapter one. I apologize by how I messed up a lot today 
I'm sorry, I was a bit distracted. My nose itched. There's a little bit of battery on my phone, and I got a little bit distracted because there's like a little slight pressure on my chest. Um, I was recently diagnosed with mild asthma, or as my doctor puts it, sensitive airways. Um, so colds easily irritated as well as other things. So, <clears throat> as you all know, my um, story is free to download at the end of this month. It's um, October 25th to 26th that you can download Immortal Love for free to your app, um, your Kindle app and your Kindle. Um, I haven't figured out a way yet to make the book free. Um, but don't worry, I'm working on some plan to fix that. Um, sorry, if you're wondering why the light in this room is changing, that's because my significant other put a light that co that changes colors in the kid's bedroom, or the kid's playroom. It's more of a playroom than the bedroom. And there's a blue balloon light over there, so hence the weird light in the room. I hope it was cool rather than distracting. If it was distracting, I apologize. Um, I did try to do this during the day, but my daughter did not want to take a nap yet. And that's why I'm here now, because she's taking a nap now. While my son is at his grandma's, so I got time. Plus, my, I feel better now. If you have any questions about the book or my fanfic or anything else, don't hesitate to ask. I will reply to you. I've decided that I'm not going to do vids involving... Replying to people for the time being because there's just, there's just not enough questions being asked. So, for now, I'll reply to you in comments. Um, also, another thing I want to point out is if you don't know already, in Mortal Love, you can see the first six chapters for free when you look at the ebook. I don't know about the paperback, but if you look at the ebook, you can read the six first chapters for free. So, and since my battery's about to go, I gotta end this. See you all later. Bye bye.